Hi everybody, welcome back to Julia in the Garden. Today I'm going to be planning out my kitchen garden or potager for the year 2023. So we'll be looking at a map that I have here of my potager, it's just a blank map of the beds, and we'll be deciding which crops I'm going to put in which beds this year. I do call it my potager because it is a mix of fruits and vegetables, herbs and flowers for cutting and ornamental and medicinal purposes um, that is hopefully put together in a pleasing design. At least I keep working towards that. I also have here a list I printed out of the fruits and vegetables and herbs and flowers that I want to plant in the potager this year. I'm gonna go ahead and change your view so that you can see what I'm doing as I plan. So here is the map of my potager garden. It is to scale. I did it on graph paper the first time and then just copied it on plain paper so I don't have the exact measurements. Um, I think each side is 60 something feet long. It's a pretty big space. Um, up here, this is the northern side, this is the southern side. Um, so that's important because um, I wanna make sure when I'm planting things, I don't put taller crops right in front of shorter crops um, with, with the taller crops on the south side because it will block the sun. Um, that's how it works for us here in the northern hemisphere. The first thing I like to do is look at the map and see what structures already exist and then also note in which plants already exist. So um, the bed shapes are all drawn out here. Uh, the ones here in the back as well as these two in the front are currently raised beds with the rest being in ground. There's been a couple changes and I should probably update my map. Hopefully for next year I'll do that. This um, Last year I turned this into one bigger bed and um, this is currently not here right now. It hasn't been for a couple, a couple seasons now and I'll come back to that as well. This here is a quince tree. And then here is an elder tree that's gotten pretty big. And in here I have some perennials as well, so um, let's see if I can remember where everything is. I've got Lady's Mantle and Sage and Thyme in here. Um, are those all of my perennials? Oh, and there's Lavender in the middle. I think that's it for the perennials in that bed. Um, I also have some um, Hyssop and Anna's Hyssop over here. I'm not sure some of the other stuff in here is going to come back, so I'm just going to leave that out. Same thing with this bed here. There's some herbs that may or may not come back. I'm trying to think of this. Oh, these are my asparagus beds here. Well, yeah, that's my asparagus. Um, I do have a, a bergamot or bee balm there. And this past fall, I did plant my garlic here, as well as I planted some spring bulbs here. Here I planted a few leeks. Um, when I went out last to see them, I didn't see any, so I don't know if they survived or not, but I'll keep that in mind. They may or may not be there. I planted them really small in the fall, so I, I yeah, they probably haven't survived, but we'll see. Okay, so I think, um, and you can see this structure here, this is like a teepee structure. I'm gonna have to fix this because this is actually leaning over pretty badly right now, um, and I might get some new sticks. So I'll try to fix that in the spring, but I think that's gonna remain as it is. And then along the fence line, there's these uh, like two, two foot-ish beds all along the fence line there as well. Um, oh, and this is a raised bed as well. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of what structures are already in the garden as well as uh, what plants are already there. As I showed you earlier, I have my list of things to grow here. Now, mostly the, the fruits and vegetables are the most important things in this garden. Even though I also do love my cut flowers, I can also stick flowers around my house and in the orchard and other places as well. But some of these crops really need to go in the potager, so that's where I'm going to start my planning. And I have certain priorities I'm going to start with. I've actually already started um, my onions and shallots and leeks. Um, I'll link the video here of, of me doing that. And I think I'm gonna put them in this bed here. Oh, I forgot something, sorry. There's some violets that hopefully will come back and fever few here. And if those don't come back, I will most likely plant another flower or something in, the, in that spot. Um, I just wanna note that there before I go ahead. I'm going to try to put the onions and shallots and leeks all in this bed. It's actually a pretty big, uh, pretty long raised bed, and I believe it's four feet across. 
Okay, so I have I have two different kinds of onion, uh, yellow and red, as well as shallots and leeks. Um, and so I'm hoping that this bed is big enough that I can do um, segments of those with some short flowers in between. So I'm just gonna put onion, onion, shallot, and leeks here. Um, the leeks should get bigger. I don't actually know how big the shallot plants get. I haven't grown them before. And then um, these might end up being marigolds or something else like that. Um, that hopefully won't, you know, they shouldn't really shade out the onions, shallots, and leeks, but um, would separate them and be pretty, I think. Um, and if I don't have room for the flowers, then that's fine. I can just, I put tags and it will work fine. So that's where I want to put those there. Um, this was a, um, this had my root vegetables in it this past year, carrots and such, as well as some cool, um, some hardy annual flowers in them. So there might be some that come back, and if those, that's the case, I can leave those <laughs> Um, in some of the spots and I might try to transplant some. Um, so that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and check those off on my list. Those are a priority for me. Uh, I want to see how many onions I can grow this year. I'd love to work, I'm working towards being able to grow our own onions for a year. These are not in order of um, importance, just in order of <laughs> how I thought of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of skip around a little bit on this list. Um, somehow I don't see potatoes on the list. Maybe I'm missing them, but I'm going to put potatoes as well as sweet potatoes on the list. I tried to grow sweet potatoes for the first time last year and um, it, I didn't really get much, but I'm going to try again. Um, potatoes I've grown for a couple years and I have in the past grown them in my raised beds and then I did like one little portion here last year in this bed where I did a Ruth Stout method which basically means um, instead of putting them in soil and hilling them up I just put them on top of soil and then I covered them just with hay and as I saw the leaves emerging I just kept covering them with more hay and I got a better crop from that than I did in my raised beds this past year. So my thought is this year I want to try just doing a whole big bed of potatoes Ruth Stout style. So I've set, I'm setting aside this bed here. Um, I call these one these big these these big bags over here my market garden beds because they are kind of bigger and I do like to do crops kind of rows like that. Um, so this was mostly my um, pumpkins this past year past two years I think. I'm not a farmer so I don't generally worry as much about crop rotation. However. Um, we did have worse uh, squash bugs and vine borers this past year than the year before. So I'm gonna go ahead and move those. So I'm gonna put my potatoes here. Um, and this is just also, um, as I'm doing this, this is more of a big picture plan. Like I know I did put like, oh, I'm gonna want some flowers there and such. But so for most of these beds, I'm just gonna put what I'm gonna, what crop is gonna go in there or multiple crops in some cases. Um, however, I'm not going to decide, oh, I'm gonna put this many potatoes in this row and these are exactly where the rows are, which might be a good idea. I did order potatoes already, so I, I kind of have an idea that I'm hoping to get five rows in here. Um, but I'm not gonna go through and decide where ex each individual plant is going. Hopefully that makes sense and will make sense as we go. <laughs> Check off potatoes here. Um, and I also have sweet potatoes, which I want to put back here again. Um, that's where I tried to grow them last year. And yeah, we're gonna try again. We're also gonna try to do the Ruth Stout method with those. I have some thoughts for these these beds back here. So let me talk about those. First of all, this one here, um, this is not, this is actually a flower. I'm gonna try to do my ranunculus and anemones back here. Anemones, sorry. Um, those go in really early in the spring, uh, about four to six weeks before our, our average last frost. And then um, hopefully we'll bloom in mostly in June, I believe they bloomed for me last year, and maybe into July a little bit. And then when those are done, I can pull out the corms and put something else here. So my plan will be to put um, bush beans in afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark off, apparently I did a really bad job of including everything on this list. I'm going to, and my handwriting is horrible, I'm sorry. I'm going to note that I have four children and I am tired, <laughs> so I do my best. But this is, this is just what it is right now. Um, hopefully we'll get everything we want in here. Okay, this bit here, I wanna do brassicas. So it'll probably be mostly cabbage, 
Um, and then I, I might do some kohlrabi. I did some kohlrabi last year. I have some purple kohlrabi and it was really yummy. And then um, I might also buy some broccoli and cauliflower starts and maybe Brussels sprouts. We'll see what the garden centers have and how I'm feeling. It's not a huge space for all that, but I shouldn't need as many cabbages as I had last year. Um, I made a lot of um, pickled red cabbage this past year. Um, we go through it pretty slowly. So um, anyway, so this is gonna, I'm just gonna, this is gonna be my brassica bed and whatever I grow is just gonna have to fit in this bed. Um, it's I think 10 feet total there, so. That's that, brassicas. Since we're back here, let's keep going with these raised beds um, and my thoughts on them. Um, okay, so for this one here, I am thinking of putting my ground cherries. Now, if you haven't tried ground cherries before, they are delightful, they are really hard to describe. Um, they're kind of related to tomatoes and tomatillos. They have the husk like tomatillos, but they don't grow up as much as just kind of spread out. Um, and it's kind of like a tropical fruity flavor, but not overly sweet. I really like them, and I made like a tiny, tiny batch of ground cherry jam, um, not this past year, but 2021, I think, and I just want more to do that with. Unfortunately for me, my season is just short enough that like once they start producing, the season's just about over, and a lot of them last year got nipped um, by frost. And so my thought is if I put them in a raised bed um, that I can cover it and maybe I can get them in a little bit sooner and also protect them from frost a little bit longer. I mean, they are warm weather loving, so I can't put them in too early, um, but maybe I can help them get started and get, get getting fruited earlier and longer. So that's, that's my plan. Um, hopefully I, I have some hoops and a cover, so I'm gonna grow ground cherries like that. Um, and we probably will also stick, I'll probably also stick some flowers along the edges because I like that, like that, but we can decide on that later. So those are my ground cherries. I'm also gonna give my zucchini a bed back here this year. And I think what I'm gonna do in this bed is, I don't know, I think there's probably just room for one, but I might do two. I think I'm gonna do um, like a little structure here with either sticks or bamboo stakes and grow peas on it. So it'll be peas in the middle with zucchini. If I have room, I might do two small ones. We'll have to see how that goes. So peas and zucchini in that bed. And again, there'll probably be some flowers in the corners. And here I wanna do my peppers and eggplant in a raised bed as well. Flowers or herbs in corners. Um, and these will probably have some stakes in them for them. Um, last year, maybe the past couple of years, I've grown them along the side here, and I've just found that along the edges, the, my um, crops don't do as well. I think the soil's just not as good, and there's a lot more weeds. There's a lot more grass coming in. Um, and so this year, my plan is to do more of the flowers along the side and doing more of my crops um, in the beds in the middle. So um, hopefully I can give my peppers and eggplants some really good soil and kind of baby them a little bit. Um, I've gotten fruit from them in the past, but they are never super big. I think that covers these for the most part. Well, these are spring bulbs. So these will come out at some point. Um, and then I don't know what's going on with the leaks. So I think what I want to do in this bed, this is kind of, this is the um, west the northwest corner here by the elder. So I can put something taller in this bed without it shading, well, it shade right here, but it should be okay. So I might do sunflowers here and succession sow them. So I would, I would start planting them here and then, you know, add like maybe two, one or two rows every couple weeks, every week or two. Um, until I fill it up. Um, and that would be probably for my pro cut sunflowers that are just like you cut them once and they're done as opposed to branching ones, um, which I'm, I have, I think I have an idea of where I wanna put them. But I can do that and then I could keep moving this way with them. Um, I have to kind of calculate how many weeks I have for that. Um, or I could put um, some more beans or possibly some small squash and pumpkin. I think that might be the best option here. I'm gonna write that in some small pumpkins. Um, Cause I have uh, Baby Boo, which are little white ones and Jack Be Little, which are little orange ones. And last year was the first time I successfully grew those and I really liked them, they're delightful. So I think, I think that's gonna be my plan after the spring bulbs. I'll recharge the soil in the bed and I'll put in 
some small pumpkin seeds. Sometimes I think about the crop here and then I think where I want it to go. Sometimes I think about the bed and think of what I want in there. This is not something I'm just making up completely on the fly. I have been thinking about this through all of last season as I'm in the garden. I think, oh, maybe I want to try this there this next year and so on. And it kind of accelerates as the season goes on. So this is something that's been kind of percolating in my mind. I have some notes I'm looking at as well over off, off camera here. So that's how, that's how this all works. Let me know in the comments how you plan your garden. Do you like look at your beds and decide what crops you want there? Or do you think about your crops inside of a bed? Or do you kind of do a combination like I'm doing? Um, or do you not plan at all and just like see what happens when you get out there? I'm curious to know, so let me know in the comments. I think I'm gonna move up to this other raised beds. My raised beds are really like my prime space because I have really good soil in them. Um, I've got really good raised bed soil from a local nursery, so I really like that. I actually think I have some bachelor's buttons that are going to come back up next to the garlic here. Um, so I'm going to leave some of them. I think they reseeded themselves last year. So I'm gonna leave that. This was all flowers this past year. It was beautiful. I had a huge bunch of scabiosa here and I absolutely loved it. Um, but this year, I think this is gonna be my root vegetables. So it will be um, carrots and rutabaga mostly. Those are the, the two we use the most. I may or may not stick some beets in there. If I do, I might just grow the um, golden beets. Those are the ones we prefer. But I, I'll work, I'll decide that later. I definitely will have carrots and rutabaga so let's find those things on here here we go rutabaga doo, doo, doo. i really wish i had organized this by um either alphabetical or something like that that probably would have been the better way to go i advise doing that i think what i want to do as well is this bed here i didn't use this possibly the last two years definitely the last year uh, it was a strawberry bed and then my strawberries didn't make it one year i i suspect that their roots got eaten by voles but they could have rotted i don't know so um it's just got weeds in it right now and I'm gonna clear it out and I think it would be great to also have some structures in here with either peas or beans. I actually have snap peas and I have two varieties of snap peas and those are kind of like my garden snack. Um, most of them don't make it into the house although they would be delicious in stir fry or just to eat as snacks in the house but they kind of end up being my garden snack and I eat them while I'm out there. And then I actually have shelling peas as well. I also need to keep in mind that I have a couple of varieties of climbing beans. So when I'm figuring out the structures, I need to figure out where all those are going. So here are my thoughts. I have a couple places to put each of these things. I just noted I'm doing structures here in these, in these beds. Um, and it'll probably just be one structure in each because I need to have room for other stuff growing around them. Um, I have this structure here that's a pretty big structure that I've grown snap peas and beans on in the past. Um, and then this, I'm actually, it looks like this is a structure. This has not been there for a couple years and I don't know what I'm doing in this space yet. So for right now, I'm not gonna plan on putting anything here and I'll discuss this more at the end, but I'm just not considering that available right now. But what I do wanna do is I do wanna put some structures as well here. Um, and this is where the past couple years I've had rows of snapdragons and, and um, I had zinnias last year, cosmos the year before over here and it's been beautiful. But this, I'm gonna change things up this year, and this year I want to do rows of peas, and I think I wanna put my shelling peas here. So these will be shelling peas on either side here. So those are covered. So that leaves the two varieties of snap peas as well as beans. Um, so I think I can, I can grow multiple varieties of beans on this trellis here. So I think that's what I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna mark beans and then I'll just probably do like, you know, a different sections for different types and mark them down. Um, so that, that will be good. And then back here can just be like my snack, snacking peas. <laughs> and hopefully that all works. While I'm back in this bed and thinking about this, I want to actually grow my cucumber around here. So I've grown my cucumber up on a trellis um, for a couple years now. And what I've found is, especially this last year, I noticed they were growing really well around the ground, along the ground. They're beautiful foliage producing really well until I tied them up onto the trellis. And once I did that, they just didn't do as well. So this year I'm actually going to experiment by just letting my cucumbers grow like on the ground in this raised bed. So hopefully that'll work. 
let me know if you've done that in the past or what you think. Um, it's it's kind of going to be an experiment. So I'm excited for experiments. It's always fun. And I made so many pickles this past year that I don't I, I don't need a huge crop of cucumbers. So it seems like a good year to experiment with it. This past two years, I've had um, rows. I've had T posts with fencing on them in. I want to say five rows for my tomatoes and cucumbers in this bed here. I'm going to move those over to this bed over here. This past year this had corn on the west side and sunflowers here. Um, but what I'm going to do is put in the trellises. I think I can fit the same number. Um, of course we'll see when we get there. And I'm going to do basically the same thing that I did over here last year over here. I'm going to do tomato, except all tomatoes, no cooked cucumbers. So this whole bed will be tomatoes with basil. Um, I absolutely love this combination. It is beautiful. It makes sense because tomatoes and basil go together so well. And I think they're really good companion plants. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm excited about that. Then that leaves this whole bed aside from having the peas over here. And this is going to be my pumpkin bed. I love to grow pumpkins. I never have enough room for them because they take up so much room and I love to grow all sorts of varieties. So I have a, I, ha I got more varieties this year. You can, I'll link my, my seed hall here so you can see. So I may also be sticking pumpkins in other places around our gardens, but this is where they're gonna go in the potager. I'm just gonna fit as many as I can reasonably fit there. Let me mark off that we've done, um, we've got um, pumpkins. This will be both pie and decorative pumpkins. And and I'll, I'll prioritize the pie pumpkins because um, although we eat both, so it's all good. And what we did, tomatoes. Um, I'm gonna try to fit all my tomatoes there, which will be fewer tomatoes that I've had than I've had in the past. Honestly, I probably will grow more than that and I'll probably have to end up sticking them in random places like along the fence and such. But for the most part, trying to stick to that, trying to grow mostly paste tomatoes this year because that is how I most like to use them. I'd like to make sauce and it takes a lot of tomatoes to make tomato sauce. So mostly paste. I will of course have some of our favorite slicers and cherries in there as well. Maybe just one row. We will see. But again, I know that this is, this is the tomato bed. That's where they're going. That's what I have to work with. And I can decide the finer details later. While we were over here, so we were just thinking about the pumpkin bed and such, next to the shelling peas, just for fun, I wanted to put some sweet alyssum along here. And I'm gonna have to go out and measure. I think these, these were supposed to be, I think, 10 feet this way, but I think they might be closer to 12. So I'm gonna need to figure that out so I know how many, how much sweet alyssum I need to start, because I do have sweet alyssum seeds. So my hope, it does work well direct sown, but I think for what I want here, I think I'm gonna try to start some inside um, and then transplant them out there. Um, so that when you come in, there's this nice like kind of carpet along the edges, like um, kind of going into the path a little bit with the, the pea structure next to them. I think that would just look lovely. I think this bed here will be the next one I address. This year I'm going to do corn in this bed and I'm going to do sweet corn, which wasn't in my seed haul because I had forgotten to order it. So I think I have since ordered it. I really should double check that. Um, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a note for myself down here. Um, my Old, oldest child, uh, my oldest daughter, um, she loves sweet corn. And last year I grew um, just popcorns. Um, and so she really wants me to grow sweet corn. So we're gonna try the sweet corn again. We might grow popcorn elsewhere on the property if I have the time and energy this spring, but it's not the top of the priority list. So this will be sweet corn. And I'll probably also put some squash in here um, with it. Um, I don't know if I would do the beans up. Tra uh, the traditional, there's there's several Native American tribes who do this um, combination with the corn, the squash along the bottom, and the beans growing up the corn, runner beans. And so I, I've, I haven't successfully made that happen in the past. So we'll see if I do that this year. I definitely will do the corn and the squash. So we'll go from there. I have both acorn and spaghetti squash, so some of those might need to go elsewhere too. Let me see, these beds are not open. This is mostly medicinal herbs. And this is mostly culinary herbs. And these, I'm not, again, I'm not gonna be super specific. I do have a list of things I want to put in um, for some of them, and so I'll make sure I start the seeds for them, but I'm not gonna decide exactly what's going where here. And this is an edible flower bed. Um, 
and I, um, I'm i gonna put a bench here. I've been saying that for two years, but it's actually mostly built right now. My son and I did together. Um, he's seven. It's a little wibbly wobbly because I'm not a professional. Um, <laughs> but we, we have it mostly together. We just need to paint it and um, like, do the finishing touches. So um, hopefully it will be in the garden this year uh, in my edible flower bed. So that's gonna go there which for these crops here that are left leaves these beds here. What we've got left that I wanna grow are more bush beans. Again, we're gonna put some in here after the ranunculus and anemones, but I think we're gonna need more space than that and to start some earlier. Um, some greens like chard and spinach and arugula and kale. Um, kale is technically a brassica, but it's not gonna go in my brassica bed, I don't think. Um, and it might be nice to have more room for the spaghetti and acorn squash, um, and then celery. So those are the things that are gonna need to go in these beds. Oh, okay. And I think, I think what I'm gonna do is just note these things, or like that these things are gonna go in these beds and then decide on exactly how I wanna lay it out later. Um, in the past, that's what I've done with this bed here. It's, the past two years has kind of turned into like a decorative, a decorative situation that I decide in the spring how I want to do it um, and so I think I'll do that in all three of these beds and hopefully have them you know at least mirror each other um, we'll see how it goes so let me just it, they need to include bush beans I'm gonna say greens which will include the chard the kale and such spinach arugula um, celery Squashes. Last year I actually did plant squashes kind of in the middle with marigolds around them and they did okay. Um, so that's one idea I could kind of repeat with the other stuff around them, but I'm not sure. We'll just think on it and um, I'm going to note that I'm going to do the same thing there. We'll think more on that and we don't have to decide for sure at this moment. Around the quince I would like to put some flowers and herbs, so I'm just going to flowers and herbs. Um, I'm thinking some calendula and chamomile. Um, we'll, we'll just, yeah, we'll see. It does have, there are daffodils and alliums that come up each spring around it, which is beautiful. So I would just put, plug them in when those are just about done. Okay, let's go ahead and cross these things off because then we know. Now it is possible, as we've seen before, that I am forgetting things that I didn't put on the list, but I think we should have at least most of them and the most important stuff seems to be in here. So that's great. Looking at these, these will all go in these beds here. So Roman chamomile is actually, I'm hoping that I can put it as like a ground cover in here. So it'll be like this, Roman chamomile and maybe some chickweed as well, which those can be stepped on. Um, and are very aromatic as well. I don't know if chickweed's as aromatic, but it's a tiny, it's edible, it's a tiny white flower. Okay, the cutting flowers are gonna be the tricky part here. I was debating if I should like plan out exactly where each of my cutting flowers are gonna go, because as you can see, I've left most of the sides here open for them. And I think I'm going to note where some of them are going, but not all of them, and I might just have to plug them in later. Um, I know that this section here First of all, it's in the northern section, so this is a good area for tall things. It also tends to get more wet. So I think over here I'm going to do sunflowers. I'm just gonna do it this way. And I'll probably do some of the branching ones. Um, I have to figure out this area here, because this is turning into path. Um, and so I don't know exactly where the bed's gonna end here. We'll just see how it goes. But I can put some sunflowers along the edge here. This can be path, and I might also put some pots here. Um, and I don't know exactly what I'd grow in them yet. There might be some cherry tomatoes, um, flowers, I don't know, to be determined, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I wanna put sunflowers at least partially along here. And then amaranth, which likes water and gets pretty tall. Um, so, can get pretty tall. So I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna put those back here. I know I'm going to need a lot of space for um, zinnias, for uh, snapdragons, 
and for Scabiosa. I think those are my three favorites. Um, the, and the others can kind of, um, I'll just have little patches of all the other things I have listed in here. I'm gonna go ahead and note that I think I wanna put a lot of zinnias along here. And I may actually put pots here as well with something, we'll see. I think I'll do snapdragons here. Snapdragons will be blooming earlier, so we'll have the color here before we have the color here. And they keep going for me all summer. They have in the past. Um, they do get a little more tired and don't bloom as much in the heat of the summer, and then they usually will come back more in the, in the fall when it cools down a bit. So that way we'll have the color along here, and then we might have to wait for the zinnias, and they probably won't go the whole way. We'll have to see. So I'll have room for other flowers along here. The sweet potatoes might go to here-ish. Um, and then the scabioso is the other one that I really want to make sure I have room for. So I think I'm going to um, make a big block of scabioso right over here. I don't know if this is going to be doable or not, but I would love this year to have a, an arbor of some sort here, like such, and grow something up it. I'm even thinking maybe honeysuckle. I think that'd be really pretty. I don't know though yet. But anyway, so I'm gonna keep the scabioso here for right now. I can always, I can always ha add it here later. And I think that's all I'm going to note for right now for the flowers. And then I'm just gonna kind of place them around. I'll have to just be aware when I'm planting, especially along here, because again, this is south and this is north, that if I put something like really short to the back of the scabioso, that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to be looking at, um, the heights that they get but also if I just leave like a little bit of space in between um, that might that might work fine and I know that my really tall things are back here there was one other thing I do want to make a note on I'm gonna grow stock again this year I grew it last year and last year the one that did the best for me was the quartet rainbow it was so beautiful and what I didn't realize and I just learned recently is that the quartet series is the only kind that's branching so you will get multiple stems from it whereas all the other stocks are not so for the stocks that don't branch, um, I think I have cat series and some others, I'm gonna probably take them out and replant something else after they're done blooming, um, after I cut them, really. So I will, um, I'll probably have a spot there that's, I mean, not blank, but has maybe baby flowers or I might direct seed something, so it might be blank for a little while, so I don't wanna put that right up front here. So for that reason, I think I'm gonna stick those back here. Um, but I think the rest of them, I'm just going to start a bunch of seeds and try to plug them in. And if I have extras of, especially my cut flowers, um, I already plan on putting some in the orchard and around the house as well. So it's not a problem for me if they don't all fit along the side. A couple more things I just wanted to share, even though we've got all the crops in here. This section here, I am debating whether I'm going to kind of put the tunnel back in. I do have some wood posts that I could use to kind of build. A tunnel, um, I can't get my hands on cattle panel. I can't get them over to my property at this point. I haven't been able to figure that out. I wanted to originally do cattle panel trellises, but so that's not gonna work. Um, so I might do a tunnel, but the other thing I was thinking is I might just make this kind of a pretty seating area and maybe just do some pots around. Um, alternatively, if I do the tunnel, I might put a table here. Um, so we'll see. Um, I'm still thinking about that. If you guys have ideas that you wanna share, I'm open to them. Let me know in the comments below. The other thing I wanted to share is one of my goals for this year is to get landscape fabric in the pads and put uh, a gravel down on them. Um, and I've thought long and hard about this. The reason I'm going with this is, um, there's a couple reasons really. Um, one, I have really struggled with grass and weeds in my potager pads and beds. I do realize, and I have experienced, there are still some weeds that come up in landscape fabric. It's a bummer, but it's really not as much. Um, it's much more manageable and I like the look of the gravel and I think it'll help me achieve the look of what I want um, as my potage. I really want it to be a somewhat somewhat more formal um, of a garden. I mean it's not it's not by any means a formal garden but I need I need to have more structure. I think the paths will give it that. I'm also looking into other ways that I can bring more structure um, and more formality, um, especially kind of like English and French garden inspired formality into the space. So I've been thinking about that. I just wanted to share that with you. If you like this content, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button below. It helps me and lets YouTube know that you like the video and it helps share it with other people. 
Additionally, if you like my content and want to see more, go ahead and subscribe below. That way my videos will come up for you on your homepage, you'll see them more. And also I'm working towards getting to a thousand subscribers this year. So if this is something you're interested in seeing, then go ahead and click that subscribe. Thank you for joining me as I went ahead and planned my kitchen garden potage for 2023. Hopefully this helped you or inspired you, or at least gives you something to watch during these uh, dark winter days if you are here in the Northern Hemisphere with me. Until next time, friends, happy gardening.